the Commissioner, you support the College of Policing guidelines on this then, that basically these incidents, even though they're not crimes, should be recorded as hate incidents. You support that. We follow the College of Policing guidelines. Right, so that those hate incidents basically then can be seen by advanced checks, even though they're not crimes, they can be seen by advanced checks for people maybe going for certain types of jobs. They will come up. Even though there's no crime involved, that's fine by you. Well, they'll, they'll occur if a, if a particular type of security check is taken, yes. They'll, they'll, be, they'll be available to be disclosed. Do you know very much about the case of Harry Miller that I think you referred to at the beginning there in the High Court? You know about the case. I know course. about the case. I'm not an expert in it. Right, OK. Well, you know that uh, because of uh, various tweets he liked, as it were, he was called by a policeman who said that uh, he had come to check his thinking. Check his thinking. What is your view on that? That's a matter... I mean, the, the circumstances of that particular case are a matter of a Humberside police, of course. Um, I can't comment on whether the officer did the right thing or not. I wasn't part of that decision-making process. My no, point okay, is... all right. But, I mean, you're, you're, you're a very senior policeman. Yes, right? and I give you my this opinion. This just happens to be a case where ha Harry Miller mm. right, had the perseverance, whatever, to, to go to the High Court. Yeah. We have no idea how, this is ha how many times this might be happening. He was, he was told to, that he was, uh, had to check his thinking, right? And, uh, basically, he came back and said, this is sort of Orwellian. And, uh, basically, when it actually came down to the case which was about him, uh, I think he liked some sort of limerick about trans, um, trans woman, a trans woman, something like this. Uh, essentially, the policeman then went into all sorts of strange details about why he'd come and then said, I've been on a course about it. So your policemen are going on courses about this sort of thing. Right? The end result is that this man was taken to a very, very, you know, a, a level of depression because of what was happening because someone felt that they could check his thinking. Now, do you not find that that is an extremely frightening prospect that we're facing now? It's a matter for Humberside. I can't comment on the Humberside Police case. All I can talk about is what the Metropolitan Police's approach to this is, because that's relevant to Londoners. And, you know, the Metropolitan Police approach is uh, in line with the College of Policing guidance, which is that we recognise that it's important to understand Incidents which may amount to some form of um, yes, I know you've already been through that. What, what? You've, already, you've already told me. But the, look, the judge, Mr. Justice Knowles, in this particular case, right, said compared the actions of the police to the Gestapo or to the Stasi. Right, he said it was very, very worrying, very, very worrying. And th there is this sort of assumption made somehow that if someone says something, which you know that is a hate instance this will automatically possibly lead to a hate crime and he said that this was in this particular case that there was absolutely no evidence to suggest that at all right but it's still been reported it's still he's still on the statistics all i can say uh, i do understand the point you make of course i do and, and disproportionality is, is is unwelcome wherever it occurs and maybe this was disproportionate i'm not giving a view on that what i'm trying to say i'm trying to reassure people disproportionate no, I'm saying there is a, you, you are suggesting it's a disproportionate. I'm saying that... No, I'm just suggesting it's more than that, actually, sir. Right. I, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm, I'm trying to sort of get to, to what you, you want to hear from me, which is, is it important for the Metropolitan Police to recognise these kind of issues as potentially important? Yes, it is. Should we know that when we go to a neighbour dispute, for example, or... A, well, any other kind of dispute, should we know that previously, when officers have been there, one or other of the parties has used offensive language for whatever reason, based on the personal characteristics of the other person? Is that an important thing for the officer to know in understanding how best to deal with the incident in front of them? I would say yes. Um, so I, I think the principle is correct, and if you speak to um, many officers, you'll know that they go back time and time again to these kind of things, and they escalate, and the, this, this is the whole purpose of making the record so that we understand... This was a case that was not going to escalate. The, right. ju the judge made that perfectly clear. You, you're making this assumption, and as a result, going down a very, very dangerous road. Okay. Very dangerous road indeed, I would say. And c if I could just sort of ask you as well in that case, mm. to go back to the guidelines, mm. whether we're talking about hate crime or hate incidents, mm. what, are, what is your view on the definition, for example, 
that it, the word the victim in the victim's perception that this is possibly a hate crime. Right? First of all, so the word victim is used immediately. Why do you not use the word complainant? Wouldn't that be legally far safer? Um, these are all um, issues which are, have been debated and thought about clearly, and there's different, there's different approaches one can take. But what I come back to is our job is to is provide a service which people can be confident in. Uh, and I think if we start to um, use technical language with members of the public, they may not fully understand what complainant exactly means, whereas victim is a commonly understood term, which no, is, is, is... It's is, assuming is, already that there's a problem. Well, if you I'm put afraid, victim I'm in the definition, it's assuming a, already. This is a national yeah. position that's been yeah. adopted, and it's, it's not for the Metropolitan Police Service, unless there's reason to, to divert from it. So, the, you know, the terminology victim flows through everything um, that we do these days. There's the Victims Code, the Victims Charter, the Home Secretary talks about victims' rights. You know, that boat has sailed, I'm afraid, and we use the term victim to describe a range of people. It, it, in technical terms, if you're approaching a court case, you're a complainant, if you're making... But actually, we choose to use the word victim because that is the common parlance. That is what people understand. Some people don't like that. I understand that. But we have to use the word that is most acceptable to most people. And victim happens to be that word. Um, it doesn't it, worry you, for example, if you go on with that definition, that basically it requires no evidence whatsoever, that this is a unique thing in that it actually requires no evidence. In fact, it requires not only no evidence, but it's the perception of the victim along or anybody else. What does that actually mean as a policeman? How would you define that, or anybody else? Well, the purpose of the wording as it is, is to, is to make sure that there's a degree of subjectivity because it's the important thing to understand about harassment and, and victimisation is, it, is a, there's the physical act, but then there's the perception and the effect it has on the individual. These are very difficult things to get right in exact language, but we try. Uh, and this definition is designed to, to recognise the subjectivity, that um, if you feel that the motivation behind the commentary is based on your personal characteristics and offensive, then that's how you feel. That's yeah, your but reality. But therefore, it then should immediately become a, a crime statistic or a hate incident statistic, even though you feel that? Well, that's how it is. That, I could feel something you're saying to me now is, is somehow hateful. What, can I go and report it? Yes, I can. Well, I'd like to think I'm not being offensive. I'm just oh. using that as an example, yeah. and you know full well what I mean, sir, here. No, no, Listen, the, the fact is, is that it seems to me that you are now policing people's thoughts. If, 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 a, if a police officer turns up and says, I've come to check, I need to check your thinking, right? The mere fact that even if he was going above and beyond these guidelines, that he felt he could do that. And what worries me is how many people, right, who don't have the various perseverance, maybe of Harry Miller, actually would just simply go along with it because they're no, none the wiser. I'm not quite sure how to, I'm not sure what you want me to say. I mean, I'm trying to set out the general position. Uh, the specifics of the Humberside case is difficult for me to comment on for, for obvious reasons. I mean, it's not my, my force. I don't understand the, the very, very fine detail of what you do. I'm not saying you're wrong. I just, it's not something that's familiar to me. What I can do is describe the approach the Met Police takes and explain the reasons why we take that approach. And, and that's pretty much the approach most police forces take. Uh, College of Policing Guidance um, is evidence of that. And I think it's the right approach for the reasons I've articulated. Will there be occasions where somebody gets it wrong? Undoubtedly, there are all the time, not just with this type of thing, but with all sorts of things. We're all, we're all human. Um, but, but it doesn't mean that the principle is wrong, I the, think. I think the principle is wrong. Uh, uh, I think that it is... I'm, I'm alarmed to hear you say that you have no problem with the guidelines. I am very alarmed because this is making you into the thought police, you know. It's making you the thought police, not just the police. And when you think as well what we've been discussing here today about sexual offences, about violent crime going up, the mere fact that whether it's the Met Police or wherever it is over the country are doing this kind of thing, you know, will make most people extremely frustrated at the very, very least.